Hello, welcome to Blue Harvest Toys. Today we're going to be talking about, yes, the Batmobile. I know I've done a Batmobile one before, but as it's Batman Day, we're going to be talking about the Batmobile again. Over the years, it's changed its appearance numerous times, but one thing for sure, Batman wouldn't be the bad guy catching machine he's become today without the aid of his trusty transport. Yes, the Lone Ranger may have his silver, Doctor Who may have the TARDIS, but you can give me the Batmobile any day of the week. Although most people probably think about the 1966 Batmobile from the television series, it's just one of the dozens of different designs from the famous motor. Batman's car made its first appearance in Detective Comics number 27. It was only referred to as Batman's car and resembled a pretty basic red convertible with no high-tech gadgets or bat insignia. In fact, it wasn't until Detective Comics number 48 in February 1941 that the car was given a legendary name and slowly it began to evolve more features like a menacing and bat-shaped insignia on the bonnet and changed from a bright red paint job to a sleek black. However, without a doubt, the key moment from the Batmobile came in 1966 with the launch of the television show. After becoming such an important part of the comics, it was vital that the small screen version of Batman had a suitably impressive ride. So with this in mind, ABC commissioned a vehicle designer, Edward and Dean Jeffries, to create the Batmobile after he successfully created a Black Beauty, the car used by other crime fighting hero, the Green Hornet. However, when Jeffries was told he would only have a few weeks to finish the work, he pressed the job over to custom car builder George Barris. With no time to spare, Barris turned his attention to the Lincoln Futura, an abandoned concept car created by Ford Motor Company. Barris had bought the vehicle for a nominal $1 after the idea was scrapped, despite the car's original cost of $250,000. Built in 1955, the Futura had some particular striking features that went onto the key parts of the Batmobile. A double clear canopy top, large tail fins at the front and rear, prominent headlights and a long sleek body. Although it was finished in white rather than black. With most of the basic design already part of the car, Paris instead concentrated on giving it a slight bat makeover. Converting the nose into the shape of a bat's face and modifying the tail fins to make them look more like back wings. Of course, the white paint job had to change too, and finished product was black and red trim to highlight the clean lines of the Futura. It's unlikely that Barris realised it at the time, but it had just created one of the most iconic on screen cars for all time. Something that would be up there with James Bond's Aston Mine DB5, Kit from Knight Rider, and the Time Machine from Back to the Future. The finishing touches for the Batmobile included a series of high-tech gadgets that would certainly make the school run significantly easier. Some of these mentioned during the series included nose-mounted chain sliver, rockets, telephone, back computer and a quick-release parachute that allowed it to perform a 180-degree turn. After designing the Batmobile, Paris kept the car until 2013 when it decided it was finally time to sell. The original Batmobile was put up for sale at Barrett Jackson Auctions and sold for a staggering $4.6 million. Not bad when you consider Barris only paid $1 for it. With the real Batmobile only taking a few months to build, the story behind the most famous toy based on the iconic vehicle is equally impressive. Legendary Corgi designer Marcel Van Kleemput had only 9 months to create a diecast version of the Batmobile. After a deal was struck in early 1996, at this time, Corgi Toys has had a great reputation for creating quality diecast models based on famous TV and film franchises because in 1965 it had released the James Bond Aston Mine DB5 as seen in Goldfinger and the Saints of Volvo. As a result, the Batmobile must have been a logical next entry into Corgi's growing TV and film portfolio. Cleanput was told to drop everything and work solely on the Batmobile once the deal had been struck. Initial designs were based on photographs of Barris's new Batmobile. After releasing the gadget-packed Aston Martin DB5 in 1965, which came with a bulletproof shield, tyre slashers and even an ejector seat, the bar had been set high for the Batmobile. But Cleanput and a team of designers, pattern makers and tool makers were up to the task. Corgi's version of the Batmobile had several fantastic features that helped it make it an instant playground hit. Firstly, it could launch a series of plastic rockets by rotating a small cog behind the driver's seat. These little red missiles may sound like a health and safety nightmare, 
But as Klimpo himself once noted, they were not as dangerous as they sound, as they were well rounded and if swallowed would easily pass through the digestive system. Phew, that's a relief then. Another play feature was the addition of a front mounted blade that could be ejected from the hidden panel on the bonnet by pressing a small button, which would then shoot out a gold plated slasher. Meanwhile, a simulated turbo exhaust moved in and out of the car was pushed around. The 1966 Batmobile was finished in matte black and had small Batman logos on the side and the gold plated wheel hubs. What's more, it even came with a plastic figure of Batman and Robin, both finished in their live action television show colours that fitted into the driver's and passenger seats. Finally, there was an impressive sculpt of Batman, looking suitably heroic on the underside of the vehicle. Apparently nothing like out in the West is worth noting, and it included a folded instruction leaflet and a self-adhesive Batman badge. To say the Batmobile was a roaring success is a bit of an understatement, because between 1966 and the end of 1969, it sold 4,907,000 plus copies. To put that in some context, the Aston Martin DB5, another of Corgi's most famous releases, managed 3,974,000 in the same time frame. For once Bond was shaken and stirred. Corgi Toys continued to produce the matte black version for around 6 months, but in 1967 the paint finish was changed to gloss rather than matte, probably to mirror the glossy appearance of the TV version, and this was one of the several changes during the lifespan of the toy. Between the Blackmobile's releases in 1966 and its demise in the 1980s, Corgi changed the wheels, suspension, added a tow hook and withdrew the flaming turbine function. Now I have done a deeper dive into the differences of those models and I will put a link in the description. As well as the model itself, Corgi has also changed the box design throughout the years. The initial releases of the late 1960s came in a spectacular presentation box complete with complicated fold out card flaps showing the dynamic duo and the Batmobile speeding out of a tunnel and the turbine leaving a bright yellow flame behind it. However, in the 1970s, this impressive design was changed to a more simpler yellow and blue card box with a plastic window allowing the children to see the wonderful toy inside. Meanwhile, the rear shows an admittedly rather badly drawn Batman punching an imaginary foe while standing next to the Batmobile. Despite the simple design, this box is very sought after because it is only produced for around three years and still contained the earlier version of the Batmobile before it was tweaked by Corgi. During the next few years, Corgi changed the window box design several times and some of the changes including a photograph of the toy on the rear, a header card with an illustration of Batman, diagrams to show the toy's functions and numerous logo changes. The final black red box of the 1980s looked nothing like the classic one used in the 1960s. Yet, even after its demise, the Batmobile still has a fond place in the hearts of many collectors and over 50 years on, it is still as popular as it was at launch. So there you go, happy Batman day. Thank you for watching. Please like and share. And I will see you next time. May the toys be with you.